Now there's so much conflicting advice, old wives tales, and general rubbish out there when it comes to healthy eating. So today nutritionist Lily Suter is here to set the record straight on 12 of the most common healthy eating myths. Thank you for coming in Lily, we need an expert because let's be honest, the internet is awash with kind of faux experts telling us to do all sorts of things. So I imagine you feel pretty strongly about this topic. Tell us a little bit about you and your background. Well, I got into nutrition because I suffered from really bad psoriasis when I was younger and food massively helped me. So I tailored all my training to do what I wanted to do in, in nutrition and I studied at Newcastle University where I completed my food and human nutrition degree and I did a further two years uh, doing nutritional therapy and I'm completing my MSc in nutritional medicine at the moment at Surrey. Well qualified. Yeah. We, can, we can guarantee we ain't got no frauds on here today. So. Let's start. Egg yolks raise cholesterol. True or false? <laughs> well, false. So there is a, definitely a common misconception that we need to stay away from egg yolks because they raise cholesterol. And this is because egg yolks actually contain cholesterol. But the research has shown... May I just ask, there's good and bad cholesterol though? That there is. Is but that true? Is that a myth? That, no, that is actually true. There is good and bad cholesterol. However, dietary cholesterol doesn't correlate with increased blood cholesterol. Which is the good one. Yeah, and, and up to one egg per day is absolutely fine uh, alongside a balanced diet. And it's really important to check what are you cooking your eggs with. So, for example, if you are scrambling them in lots of saturated fat like butter or you're combining them with fatty cuts of meat like bacon, it's more likely to be the saturated fat which will raise the harmful cholesterol rather than the egg yolks in and of themselves. People just want to cut the yolk because they don't want to cut the bacon. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, sorry, guys. <laughs> I hate to ruin it for you. Right, fruit is high in sugar, therefore we need to limit intake. This is, I feel like, is a real faddy misconception, hopefully. Absolutely. And there is a lot of confusion as to whether we should cut back on fruit. You may have heard of people saying bananas make you fat or fruit is high in sugar, so it's very unhealthy. But really, the sugar in fruit is actually locked into a fibrous matrix, which helps to slow the rate at which the sugar is released into the bloodstream. And what's more, fruit has a very high fibre content and this fibre has satiating properties, so it helps to keep us full. So you won't really hear of people eating 10 oranges in a row, but you may drink a glass of orange juice which has 10 oranges juiced. And it just shows the power of fibre on how it makes us feel. Interesting. I mean, I feel like juicing is a whole other topic, but we can't get into that right now. Um, carbohydrates make you fat. I mean, classic. Again, very common misconception Good. and an overconsumption of any kind of food group will lead to weight gain. It's important to know what are you combining your carbs with. So if you are adding lots of butter to your toast or you are having heavy pasta sauces or fatty chips, it's the overall caloric value of that dish, dish which will lead to the weight gain rather than the carbs. Carb itself, okay. Yeah. So all of this seems to be like you need to have a general overview of what you're consuming. It's yeah. never just the one thing. Absolutely. Huh, yeah. Look at me, learning. <laughs> right, unrefined sugar huh, is healthier than white sugar. Big on Insta, I'd say, mm. this kind of healthy baking with, you know, yeah. none of the refined sugar. Which I guess the issue there is that it can lead to overconsumption of sugar because we perceive unrefined as much healthier. And I guess this perception comes from the fact that unrefined sugar does tend to have more vitamins, minerals and antioxidants. But for those vitamins, minerals and antioxidants to have any impact on our daily nutrient status, we would have to eat a lot of sugar and that would entirely negate the benefits. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, sorry, no. Yeah. So, would a cube of regular chocolate versus a cube of, I don't know, date syrup chocolate? that even exists, be any different really for you on your sugar consumption? Very marginally, very marginally. So you don't need to get yourself in a tiz no, on that? No, Just have a little? Absolutely. For those that can stick to a cube, good for you. Uh, <laughs> all low fat yoghurt is high in sugar. And I feel like this is definitely something I believe because if they've taken out the fat and the kind of flavour and fullness, what they're putting in to compensate. But please, tell yeah. me I'm wrong. 
So again, it's a myth. You know, a lot of low-fat yogurts, if they are flavoured, they can have added sugar to counteract that tart flavour. But it doesn't apply to all low-fat yogurt. Right. Generally, if it's flavoured, that's what's to look out for. And always check the back of the label to see if there is added sugar, because yogurt naturally contains some intrinsic sugar. And a quick way of going about to check if yogurt is high in sugar is to double check if it's got more than 22.5 grams of sugar per 100 grams, that is high in sugar and it will flag up on the red zone of the traffic light labeling system. Okay, great. So anything else is a natural amount that's contained? Yes. Okay, great. Um, oh, we better crack on, there's so many. Yeah. Right, sugar is as addictive as drugs. There's a lot of confusion around this, a lot of debate. Most of the research has been done on rats where when they are exposed to a sugar solution, they will probably display addictive binge-like properties, but it's only when they've been deprived of food for a period of time. When they're exposed to a sugar solution like a normal person and it's not being deprived from them, those addictive like binge like behaviors disappear. So if we were fasting all day and then all there was in front of us was sugar, we'd probably have a similar reaction, but if we could eat normally then we might not. Likely, and it's difficult to determine whether they are over consuming sugar due to hunger or genuine withdrawal. So we need to test it on humans really and Absolutely. chat to them about it. Absolutely. Any volunteers? Um, okay, fresh food is healthier than frozen. Not always the case. When frozen food is actually frozen, it's picked at its ripe, uh, when it's most ripe, and therefore it could have more nutrients. They degrade more slowly when it's frozen as well. So if you buy it frozen but use quite instantly once you have them, it should be okay? Yes. Um, nuts will cause weight gain. The era of nut butter is upon us, so tell me that ain't true. Yeah, so there's some interesting research which had about 100 females where they were overweight and they had a handful of nuts each day and they lost more weight than those who didn't consume any nuts. And it's thought that these properties are down to their satiating effects, which is due to the fiber, protein and healthy fats found in nuts. So they could help with weight loss but nuts are high in calories, so you don't want to overconsume them. Right, so it's have your handful, but you don't need to be like gorging on yes. packs of nuts. Yeah. Again, moderation, I mean, it's the same thing that we do know, we just don't want to hear, I think. Yeah. Um, canned vegetables are always less nutritious in comparison to fresh. Not always the case. Oh. Uh, so if you look at canned tomatoes, they actually are richer in an antioxidant called lycopene. And lycopene gives canned tomatoes that red, vibrant sort of colour. And lycopene has actually been researched for benefits on cardiovascular health. Wow. Yeah. That's really good to know, because I use a lot of those at home. Right, hot water and lemon alkalizes the body. I mean, surely that must be true. So this has been going on for a while, this yeah. myth, and actually our body has a homeostatic mechanism where it's tightly controlled in relation to its pH levels. If our bodies were too acidic, we would be very ill in hospital, and no food or drink will alkalize the body. Huh. Right, so that's just a mental nice cleansing thing to do, but <laughs> there's no absolute beneficial no. impact to it. Coffee is unhealthy, say it ain't so. Excess consumption isn't going to be great, but coffee is also very rich in antioxidants, which could have beneficial effects on health. And also we do know that short-term coffee consumption can have positive effects on energy, cognitive performance, and even mood. And also, I guess, with coffee, again, if you're mixing it with, like, creamy, sugary syrups, yeah. not good. But if you're having a nice, plain Ameri black Americano, buzzing. Mm -hmm. Literally. Right, finally, we should never cook with olive oil. I mean, that one is definitely around. Yeah, absolutely. So olive oil is very rich in monounsaturated fats and vitamin E, which have really great properties for heart health. And it's going to be a better oil to cook with than saturated fats like butter. I guess the worry comes from the smoke point of olive oil, and that's basically the point at which the oil will burn when you cook at a certain temperature. But really, when we're frying, we fry at around 170 degrees, only for a couple of minutes, so olive oil should be fine. But if it is of concern, you could use something like refined olive oil, which has a higher smoke point. Right, okay. And yeah. coconut oil, just quickly. 
coconut oil is fine. It's still a saturated fat at the end of the day, so moderation is going to be important. Um, avocado oil has not really had much PR around it, but it actually has a higher smoke point than coconut oil. Oh, so and, that would be a good one. Yeah, and it's a monounsaturated fat, which could be an option. Oh, good to know. Everyone load up on the avo oil. All right, Lily, well, I think you've cleared up a lot there. Thank, Thank you, you so much for joining us. If you are looking for more nutritional advice, please do go and visit www.lilysuternutrition.com.